In this Taylor series tidbit, we're going to talk about how to multiply two natural numbers. Remember, a natural number is just a whole number that's positive, and we're going to see what multiplication is in a second. While it's not necessary to memorize the multiplication tables, and it can seem daunting, in the long run, it actually is a pretty useful life hack to just kind of know what those numbers are. Let's start with an example. Let's multiply the numbers 653 with 72. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the bottom number, 72, and begin with the right digit, multiplying that by the right digit of the top number. So in this case, we have 2 times 3, giving us 6, which we'll write here. Now we're going to move to the next digit in the top number, which is a 5. 2 times 5 gives us 10, so we're going to have to carry this 1 here up to the top of the 6. But we're going to have to do something interesting with it, which I'll show in a moment. Let's move to the final number on the top, the 6, and multiply it by the 2. This gives us 12, or in this case, 1200. But what about that 1? Well, we're going to do what we did when we were adding these numbers, and simply add it to the 12, giving us 13. Now our next step is we're going to multiply the next number in our bottom number, the 7, times the numbers in the top again. We're going to add a 0 in the bottom, because what we're really doing is multiplying that top number by 7t. What that means is, there's a 7 0 there, and we're going to put that 0 at the bottom. And so, we're going to multiply the 7 itself by all of those numbers on top. So we have 7 times 3, which is 21, so we'll put the 1 here, and we'll carry the 2. We're going to multiply the 7 times the 5, giving us 35, and we'll add the 2 that we carried earlier to that, giving us 37. This now gives us another carry of 3, so we'll put the 3 here. And don't worry about the fact that there used to be a 1 there. The number we're really thinking about is that 3 that we've just carried. Now we're going to multiply the 6 and the 7, giving us 42, and of course we'll add the 3 we carried. So that's going to give us 45. And though we're going to add these two numbers together with a couple of carries, the end result is 47,016. But why does it work? When we carried all of those numbers and added the 0 to the second line, we were really executing an algorithm that kept track very cleverly of the place value of these numbers, so that when we went to multiply the numbers, all we were ever multiplying were two single-digit numbers. That's why I mentioned the life hack at the beginning of the video. We're already familiar with the place of the number having to do with how much quantity it represents. For example, if we take 653, that 6 being in the hundreds spot would be very different than if it were in the thousands spot. In that sense, we need both the location and the symbol to represent a quantity in a number. That's why we call it a positional number system. The position of the numbers counts. Haha, count. Get it? That's never going to not be fun. Never. To really understand this, let's look at a couple of details. The first detail is that when you have a number with trailing zeros, and you multiply it by another number, you can simply multiply those numbers together without the trailing zeros, and at the end, you can simply tack on the extra zeros. Why does that work? Think about 12 times 10. That's 10 12s, or 12 10s. If you think about it like 12 10s, you realize that we're never going to have anything in the 1s place because all we're adding together are 10s, and every single one of those has nothing in the 1s place. It's a 0. This also works if you consider something like 4 times 130. 4 times 13 is 52, and then we add the 0 onto the end like this. And again, this is because when you have 130, that's 13 10s. You're never going to have anything in your 1s place, no matter how many of those you add together. Happily, this works for any number of zeros, in either number. So you can have a bunch of zeros on one side and a bunch of zeros on the other side. Simplify your numbers by getting rid of the trailing zeros, multiplying, and then tacking those trailing zeros onto the very end of your answer. The next detail is, let's take the number 653 and 72 and multiply it with a different algorithm. It will still get you the same answer. It will just look different and perhaps is more clear. The benefit of the algorithm I showed you at first is that it's compact and quick. This algorithm is less compact, but more clear. So because earlier I mentioned that those carries and that zero I added were me keeping track of the place values of numbers, let's go ahead and fan those out to actually look at those. So by that I mean, let's take 653 and write it as 600 plus 50 plus 3. Let's also write 72 as 70 plus 2. Now when we multiply these two numbers together, we're really saying, let's have two of all of those things up top, and then 70 of all of those things on top. In fact, you are really just doing six different multiplications here. 2 times 3, 2 times 50, 
2 times 600, 70 times 3, 70 times 5, and 70 times 600. Now what we've done is we've taken this multiplication and chopped it up into little pieces. And when we add all those pieces up, you'll notice we still get the same answer. Look at the first three numbers here. What we have is 6 plus 100 plus 1200. That right there is the 1306 that we had for the first part of our algorithm earlier. You'll notice that the 100 had the carry. That 1 in the 100 carried to the very top. But let's look at those last three numbers. 70 times 3 gave us 210. That's 210 with a 0 at the end because 70 had a trailing 0 that we could tack on the end. In fact, all of these numbers are going to have at least one trailing 0. That 0 is the 0 we wrote down earlier in our algorithm. And the reason we did it that way was to simplify the process. Well, when we add these three numbers together, we get 45,710. That's the number we had on the second line. And then all we're doing is adding them up. Personally, I like the shorter method. That's the one that I learned when I was growing up, which is why I showed it to you here. There are other algorithms, and perhaps in future videos I'll cover some of them. At the very least, you now have one algorithm that works, and now you know why it works. And that's it for this tidbit. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. If you really like the video, come on over to our Patreon page where you can get involved and see all the cool stuff we're doing.